Hey everybody, today I am going to unbox my brand new Starlink for RV Wi-Fi system. I am so excited for this and this absolutely goes without saying that this is not sponsored. So I'm just going to go ahead and unbox this puppy and hopefully I can set it up for you guys too. And we'll just do a little like first impressions. So, first off, first impression at the post office was this is very heavy. Um, second impression is that it's very large, um, which you can see. I don't have a very large vehicle. Um, it's true that I bought a house and everything, but like this is still, I still am going to be in the van a lot. So that may or may not be a problem comes with this nice little piece of cardboard that's kind of useless and then a very large piece of plastic so we are really not concerned about the environment at all here and what I assume is a mounting base it's metal very good quality another piece of plastic and then what appears to be the dish it's just white which speaking from experience will get dirty really quickly in an rv so it's a very large system so my current like router system is probably half the size of this it's a mophie router and instead of having a big dish it just has some antennas this looks cooler but it's also much larger so we'll see if i have a good spot for this in the van and they give you a lot of cord, which I can see as being a pro for some people, but it's also a con for some people who are, um, you know, in the vehicle that is pretty small. So this side is just a micro USB, I think. The other side is hooked up to the receiver. And then we have a plug. So something that they don't make clear at all, you know, if you've ever looked at Starlink, their website is incredibly minimal. So it looks beautiful, but they don't tell you a lot of information. This comes with a 110 power volt, power thing. So my van is actually set up completely 12 volt, meaning like USB um, and car battery. I don't have an inverter at all in my van. Everything I have was able to be um powered with 12 volt so my mophie router is able to be powered 12 volt and my laptop has a dc charger and all that kind of stuff so i didn't realize this and i don't know actually how clear that they even made it on the website but um for me this rv setup is not workable i think probably the majority of rvs will have 110 power um but i think a lot of van people and even boat people are on 12 volt and we buy a lot of rv things thinking that it will work for us and evidently without a uh, inverter it won't work for us so there is a pamphlet here it's a lot of very small words, but I'm sure it tells me everything that I need to know. There is the, the easiest accessible thing on this page is temperature. So outdoor temperatures between negative 22 Fahrenheit and 122 Fahrenheit. Restricted to indoor use only. Mounts are not designed for high winds or hurricane tornado loads. Tethering should be used in all cases. So that's kind of another thing. And I think that they sell different sorts of mounts and stuff online. It's a little bit annoying that you don't get to customize what you get in your kit um, because I know a lot of RV people would have this mounted on their roof 24 seven. Um, and they don't give you, they just give you the ground mount. So having the option to swap the ground mount for a roof mount probably would actually save them money. I don't know how complicated or how much money it costs to make each of these, but 
the roof mount is significantly smaller, at least from that. So unless it's more difficult to make, it's probably cheaper for them to let you substitute that. So let me go back to the first paragraph here that I skimmed over. Starlink is a satellite internet di connectivity system comprising of a Starlink dish, Wi-Fi router, and an AC power supply. Starlink dish operates on a DC powered supply by an external AC power supply or router rated 100 to 240 volts. So that's really interesting that the dish itself runs on DC, but evidently somewhere in here there's a converter um, to turn the AC into DC power. So it doesn't tell you how much power it consumes, which for an RV geared product, that's like really important. RV people, we like everybody who has ever determined how much battery you need in an RV or a camper van or a boat, they go through and they take the list of all their appliances and how much energy it consumes. And they like do some math and calculations and say, oh, this is how much battery I need. So the fact that this doesn't tell you, at least in the paperwork is a really annoying, maybe online that they have that information, but who knows? So that's all the information. So I, I really thought that I was going to be able to use this in my van and I can't, I will still be able to like start it up and get some speed tests and everything. Cause I am actually at my house. Um, and I will be able to plug it in. So I guess let me go plug it in and let's try it out and see what happens. Not gonna lie, this freaked me out. I just walked over here to start filming how I had to put the cord through the window and it started moving and it, it really freaked me out here for a second. So coming inside, you can see that's where the cord comes through the window. And then this part here is kind of my own day and fault. Um, <laughs> currently, this whole uh, room's electrical outlets don't work. Um, and so if they did, I could theoretically just run it through, plug it in here. It could sit on my windowsill and we'd be done. Um, as it is, it's a good thing that they sent me all this cable. And then here is what it looks like on the table. Keeping it real with you guys. <laughs> um, it It's nice looking, I suppose. Um, I do appreciate the attention to detail on the bottom that all of these are like nice and recessed. Um, I personally appreciate that there's no light on this, especially in the van, because in the van lights are just so much brighter and so it's it like even a little light like i have all of my mophie router lights taped off with electrical tape so i can't see them because at night you can actually still see them through the tape so yeah i, I appreciate that there's no light on this and the light is on the bottom okay so i'm going to come back outside because it's way less echoey i am going to look at my router setting or my wi-fi settings i will I suppose I'll screen record so that you can see what I'm doing. Um, it's right there, Starlink is right there. I just click the button, it says it's an unsecured network. Duh, because it hasn't been set up yet. It's thinking about it. And now it's there, it says create a network, enter Wi-Fi name. I'll call it link to the stars. And a password, which you don't get to know. Okay, so now it's prompting me to um, use another network. So Starlink has so far not been renamed. I did the, yeah, and it's unable to start it. So, oh, there it is. There, it just took a little bit of a second for the router to configure. Now it's renamed to how I renamed it. And, I'm setting the password and I'm logged in. So the real question, okay, now it's on the Wi-Fi. It took a second. <laughs> so the real question now is let's hit some speed test and hit go. Cannot reach speed test. I don't have internet right now. 
So either this needs a little bit more time to think about it and configure or we have a problem. I guess I'm going to call this a fail and I will let you know it's 730 right now. I will let you know how long it takes before I get internet and if I do what the speeds are. Okay, it's 7.50. I'll screen record so I have proof of that. Um, and I repositioned the dish and it recalibrated. The thing is, is that where I repositioned it to has the same view as it did the first time I set it up. So I don't know why it now has found the satellite, but it couldn't before or it didn't before. It's facing the same empty sky as it was before. Either way, I'm gonna run the test. I'm kind of not impressed. This is a very expensive service, like $135 a month service, which is much more expensive than a cell phone. For my router right now, I'm currently paying $140 a month. Um, I need internet here and I didn't wanna pay twice. I didn't wanna pay for every month $140 for a router in my van that I'm not using because I'm here. And I didn't want to get rid of that because I'm grandfathered in and it's really hard to get these plans anymore. Um, but it doesn't work here. It doesn't work for my home internet. So I was really hoping that Starlink would be the answer, that I would be comfortable letting go of my grandfathered in router and just having Starlink. And yeah, it's a little bit bulky for the van. I knew it would be a little bit bulky, but I thought I would be able to set it up in the van some way, shape or form. It, I can't, it's just too large for my, my vehicle. Um, I, I was just hoping that it would be workable in the van when I wasn't home. If it was only workable for me to have it in the van, it wasn't great, but it was workable. I'd feel better, but for me to be getting basically the same speed, this is this Starlink is actually worse than my Verizon speed. My T-Mobile probably, I don't, why not? Let me go turn on my, turn off my Wi-Fi, hitting my speed test, and let's see. Um, because my T-Mobile really doesn't have great service here either. And right now, at this exact moment, it's clocking 65 megabits per second. Three times Starlink, and this is Mint Mobile for 15 bucks a month. And that's $135 a month and a huge bulky setup that you can't put through a wall well. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sending Starlink back. I can't justify the cost. $700 worth of equipment that is not going to be able to do what it claims to do, which is work in an RV. I understand that I don't have an RV, but I'm I'm putting myself in a mindset where I did have an RV. This really, to me, feels like they took their home service and uh, slapped a price tag on it that was bigger with a larger monthly payment and promised you slower speeds because they do upfront tell you that you will not get the same speeds. Um, so you're paying more for less, um, with the promise that it will work in an RV and it doesn't. I really thought that Starlink would be everybody, no problem. And they're mediocre. So I think you all understand how disappointed I am. Um, I, I genuinely will be sending this back and I'm going to leave this set up today and probably tomorrow. I'll try and do work on it tomorrow on my laptop. They give you a 30 day free trial and it's gonna go back next time I'm in town. I'll I'll update you in ch if, if that changes, but I can't imagine it will, so. Hey guys, um, I'm editing this video and I don't think I made points very clear or concisely in um, my video clips that you just saw. I was a little bit flustered, a little bit upset, so. I'm going to try and do my best to actually kind of explain exactly why I have a problem here. I had Starlink at my house operating for 
a week, I would say, before I sent it back and it has officially been sent back. I do not have it anymore. I've received the refund already. When I signed up for it, it was brand new. They had just sent the promo email um, and so there was no marketing or anything that made it clear that you were getting just a regular Starlink. And the only thing different was the fact that you can cancel it and that you can travel with it. Um, maybe that has become more clear now if people have been watching reviews like this, or maybe it's on the website and it's more specific now. But when I signed up, it literally was just an email that said, hey, you should get this because um, it's available. And then the website just had you put your, your address in and get it. So it's not necessarily that the speeds are slower than my T-Mobile or my Verizon phone, for example. The issue I have with paying more money for the RV plan is that they deprioritize the RV plans. On their website, right there, smack in your face, it says that you will have slower speeds. The RV is the bottom tier. You are not prioritized if there's peak periods or if you travel to a place where Starlink has a wait list, you're at the bottom of the barrel for getting service. I understand the reasoning for that. However, in my head, you need to have things to offset that. On, it, on the surface level, nobody's gonna pay more for less. The two things that they offer you that um, will theoretically make up the difference between the more expensive price tag for the worst service is one, the ability to take the um, internet service all over the place. That your, your Starlink isn't going to say, hey, wait a minute, you're not at home. Um, we can't provide service to you. So it can travel. The other service that they provide for that is that you can cancel on a monthly basis. So if you had a summer home, for example, that this just lived at um, and you're only there three months of the year, you're only paying for it three months of the year. Um, that's potentially good for some people. Personally, I don't think that it's that helpful because for example, if I'm in um, the van and I'm visiting family, oh, I don't need it this month, it's probably like the 15th to the 15th, you know, or I'm, I don't need it six weeks, but I can only cancel it for a calendar month. If I was gone somewhere for six weeks and it wasn't like a perfect calendar six weeks, like I would probably just keep the service going that whole time because I don't wanna be without the service for the first week of one month and then the last week of another month. Um, so I would have to just keep the service. Um, so that's a little bit not helpful. Um, the points that I wanted to make about the RV setup. I want to be clear that if you are an RV who parks in an RV park, you're hooked up to shore power, you're there for months out of the year, maybe you snowbird, um, in the south and then you come and you're in a park in the north, um, Starlink will probably be fine. Um, so long as you are pretty certain about the security of your park because um, the dish might just be sitting out on the ground where somebody could theoretically steal it. I don't know how easy these are to reconfigure for there to be a lot of thieves who want to steal Starlinks but they look really fancy for somebody to just be walking along and say, hmm, that looks expensive, I might steal it. Where the problem is for me is that that's not my life. Um, while it's at home, sure, it, it can sit out. And I, like I said, I used it for a week. It's fine if it's stationary. But the way that a lot of, not just van people, but um, RV people do too is that you pick up and go, you know, you're you're at a place for one day and then you're at another place for three days and you're at a place for a week. And maybe this place is um, a city street parking or maybe you're at a Walmart or um, now you're in a national park. So the portability of the um, dish is lacking because Every time you move, you have to pick the whole thing up and put it back in your vehicle. Um, and they basically, 
I don't understand what they're doing because they sell roof mounts but then they tell you not to drive with it. They tell you that it, it should not be driven with. Um, there's conflicting information because I've also seen that, oh, it's fine, you just have to put it into the stow mode. But the stow mode is not aerodynamic. It doesn't put, it, it doesn't put the um, dish in an aerodynamic mode where it's flat against the roof or something like that. Um, so conflicting evidence whether you are okay or not to be able to just leave this mounted on a roof. For a smaller vehicle like a van, it's a very large item to have on your roof. I wouldn't be able to mount this on my roof. I don't have the real estate for it. Um, and so it would probably only be able to be roof mounted on an RV. So let's just say you wanna play it safe. You don't wanna risk losing your Starlink down the road or um, the wind speeds tearing your Starlink dish off your roof or whatever and so you're doing what they say and not driving with it and so you have just the ground little tripod that you're using so I would have to plug everything in set it down you know calibrate it and then I would have internet. That's like at least 10 minutes of work every single time I go someplace and then another 10 minutes to stow it again. Um, because it's not like you can just pick it up. You have to click a button in the app to stow it. Um, and that's just the dish. Um, there's the power cord that if you didn't have this permanently mounted for there to be a hole through your roof or something somewhere, you would probably be running a power cord out a, out a window or a door which is just hokey for something that claims to be very elegant. Um, and that situation only works if you're somewhere you feel safe. If I am, you know, I spend a couple of years usually every winter um, parked in Venice Beach um, and that's street parking. And I would have zero internet there because I can't set this up inside my van. My van's too small. Even if you had an RV, it's still a lot of real estate for it to be sitting on a table or something. Um, and you wouldn't want to put it outside because there's a million people walking around. You don't want the cord. You'd have to leave a door open or unlocked or a window open or unlocked to have the cable running through it. When, when they say, oh, don't leave it mounted on your roof to drive, but then you can't really put it outside because if you do street or self camping, it, it kind of just creates a situation where you can't use it. So in addition, the router itself, um, it's very sleek and very nice, but it has nothing to mount it. And when you're driving down the road, that piece of plastic is gonna go flying. You would have to tape it to a table. There's no wall mounting hooks to it, nothing. You just have to tape it somewhere or unplug it every single time you drive and put it on the bed. So overarchingly, the actual hardware is not is not conducive to anyone who does any sort of traveling on a consistent basis in an RV. Whether you have a boat, a camper van, anything. I'm just saying RV in general. Um, if you're someplace six months out of the year and another place six months out of the year, it's fine. You'll have no problems with it. It's not a big deal. So, for me, it does really come down to use case. For my use case, I'm not able to use the hardware. I am in street parking. I am unwilling to set it up and take it down every single time I move on a daily basis. Um, therefore, I am paying for the RV service, which is more expensive to utilize it at my house but because it's the RV service, it will be deprioritized service. And I don't want to do that. I would, I'm not willing to pay more money for work deprioritized service. That's my review on Starlink. It didn't work out for me. I'm sure there are some people it's gonna work out great for, but uh, moral of the story is if you're somebody who moves around a lot and if you have a smaller rig, it, it's probably not gonna work for you, so.